in these few minutes I want to share with you a reminder or uh, some things about the early revelations of the Quran. One of the themes that was highlighted more than perhaps any other uh, was the concept of the afterlife. The day of judgment, paradise, hellfire, you know, the reckoning, uh, the world coming to an end and us being raised again for another life after this one. It's a recurring theme, it keeps coming up over and over again and is discussed in a lot of detail. The question arises why? What are the benefits of having that as a main central discourse in Islam and especially in the early revelations when the foundations of the faith were being set? Essentially the idea is you know, it's captured in, for example, one, one place in the Qur'an, كَلَّا بَلْ تُحِبُّونَ الْعَاجِلَةِ وَتَذَرُونَ الْآخِرَةِ No, you love to rush. Human nature, that it loves to rush. We, we like to consume things and get things to come our way quickly, especially good things. Or we want bad things to be removed from ourselves quickly, immediately. And so this, this mentality was challenged. And as a result, you like to put the eventual things off and even the afterlife off. So if somebody tells you you should worry about your salvation, which is obviously a concern after you die. Well, I got bigger things right now to worry about. I got a job, I got finances, I got family issues, I got personal things. Whatever I have to do right now is a bigger priority for me for whatever's coming, as opposed to whatever's coming later. So what the Quran does is it gives us a bigger picture. In other words, nothing I do is any longer trivial. It's no longer meaningless. Allah says, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّ مَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ It's very interesting. Allah says, have you assumed that we created you without purpose? and that you won't be returned to us. In other words, returning to God in and of itself is a very powerful indication that everything you do has purpose. My, my actions don't die with time. Whatever I do, its consequences are recorded and they're going to have repercussions in this world and especially repercussions in the next. Some of the benefits of this is, of course, number one, it makes me conscious of my actions. And I start thinking not just of the consequences they're going to have here, but later on. It removes from me the idea that nobody saw what I did. That, that's gone. God saw what I did and it's on record and I'm going to have to answer for it. So there will be an accountability for everything that I do. That's number two. Three, I realize that as a result, I have to keep turning back to God for forgiveness because there's a countless number of mistakes I make all the time. So it makes me a person that seeks God's forgiveness all the time, seeks Allah's forgiveness. And as a result, I become closer and closer to Allah, closer to God. So the, the the concept of the afterlife actually drives me to become closer to Allah. Because the focus in Islam is always Allah. It goes back to Allah every time. Even if the, the conversation is about paradise or hellfire, the point of it is to take us back to Allah Himself. But finally and most importantly, we don't think of anything as trivial. In other words, we don't think of our time in this world as trivial. This, this little bit of time that we have on this earth compared to the actual lifespan that Allah has given me. In other words, when He Almighty created me, uh, this is even before the creation of, you know, the, our generations of people and our souls, our, our arwah were created and one of them is picked by the angel and dropped into the belly of a mother so that she can deliver this child. All of us are creatures before, all, you know, before even the earth. And we were asked a question about our faith even before we came to this earth. And then after we die from here, we're going to go into another state of life and it's going to go on for generations. Some people, that life in the grave that they're, that they're going through, They've been going through it for thousands of years. And they've been, they've been in there. That's another phase of life. We don't see it as death. We see it as another stop in the journey of life. So when you compare all these stops in the journey of life, you would realize that this life, meaning from my birth to my worldly death, is the shortest stop in this journey. It's the, sh the shortest span, you know. You don't even realize when it's over, you know. And so when you realize that, then you also realize this tiniest space this tiniest lifetime that I have, span that I have, this is the one that will determine all of my actions in the future. My eternal life is based on this, these very few moments. So my time is no longer trivial. I have to make the best of it, I have to make the most of it. There's no such thing as free time for me now. What the afterlife does is gives me respect for my time, a sense of urgency to accomplish more and more good and to get away from more and more evil. It destroys laziness inside me. So if I find, and Muslims in the audience, if you find yourself being lazy, then you have to ask whether or not your, your beliefs in the afterlife are concrete enough. Maybe you need more reminder about the afterlife because they necessarily give you a sense of urgency. And for those of you who think, well, Judgment Day, Paradise, Hellfire, it's so far away, what does Allah Himself say? إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا No doubt they see it far away. We see it near. I hope this, was a, this reminder was of some benefit. 
uh, to you. I, I personally benefit from reminding myself in that all of us have to rejuvenate in ourselves a better use of our time, especially through a reminder of the Akhirah. May Allah give all of us success in the afterlife. Barakallahu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum.